If you're struggling to land a data job right now, it's probably because someone told you one of these seven data myths. Number one is that data analyst, data scientist, and data engineer are the only titles. And in particularly, I'm gonna focus in on data analysts. Now, I love becoming data analyst. I talk about becoming a data analyst all the time. But really, when I say data analyst, I really mean like a hundred different titles and roles that you possibly could be applying for. Data analyst is someone who analyzes data, but there's a bunch of other titles that you you may not be thinking of that actually do the exact same task. So for example, a financial analyst and data analyst kind of do the same thing. It's just a data analyst very focused on financial things. A business analyst is like halfway data analyst, halfway like a business operations person. Healthcare analyst is the same thing. You're actually really like a financial analyst for healthcare data. Uh, there's so many different titles, you guys. Pricing analyst, product analyst, supply chain analyst, marketing analyst, logistics analyst, like there are so many different titles. I can't even tell you all the different titles. Now that's not to say that those titles are better than data analysts. They're not necessarily, but they all are kind of the same. And in the end, there's actually a lot more jobs that are data analyst jobs that aren't called data analyst. For example, I can't remember the, the numbers off the top of my head, but on my data job board, findadatajob.com, there's actually more financial analyst and business analyst roles than there are data analyst roles. So not only are there more opportunities in those two different roles, but also you probably have less people applying and looking for those roles. So there's uh, more of a supply and less of demand, which is great for job seekers like you because it means it's less competitive. So instead of only focusing on the data analyst title, I would focus on all those other titles. Like I said, there's a bunch business intelligence, like there's so many, I can't tell you all of them. But my point here is if you're only looking for data analyst jobs, you're doing yourself a disservice. Myth number two is that you currently right now have zero data experience and there's just no way on planet earth. That's true. I don't care what your profession is. I don't care what you've done in the past. You have some data experience and you need to stop selling yourself short. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to look at everything that you've ever done in your life and try to figure out when you have some sort of data analytics experience. So an easy thing to do is be like, okay, when have I ever used Excel or Google Sheets? When have I ever used some sort of a spreadsheet or a table? If you're using a spreadsheet or a table, we can chalk it up to some sort of data analytics experience. And if you're like, hey, I've never used it before, okay. But you probably have, right? Like in school or at work or even at home, you've probably used a spreadsheet. That counts as data analytics work. Next, I want you to think about whenever you've made some sort of a decision. You probably did it in some analytical way by like making a pros and a cons, right? I mean, that's data analytics as well because you're using data, the pros and the cons to make a decision. Now, is it uh, quantitative data? Maybe not, but you're still using data to make decisions. And I think that counts as experience. I have two kids under two and I feel like they're sick all the time. And I'm constantly going through logs of like, this is when they ate, this is what they ate, this is where they went. And I'm trying to figure out what caused the illness. I think that counts as data analytics. And I think you should feel confident that you have some experience. Also, I think on your resume, whatever job you've had in the past, you can figure out a way to make it have some sort of data analyst experience. Figure out when you used Excel, figure out when you made decisions and craft bullet points around that. I promise no matter your job, let's just take a teacher, for example. Like, does a teacher do data analytics? No, but can we make it sound like it? And is it kind of a little bit data analytics-y sometimes? Yes. For example, they have to do grading, right? Grading is you put the data into a spreadsheet and then you're kind of monitoring like who's failing, who's doing really well, who maybe needs a little bit more effort. You're looking at the data to decide, oh, did I teach this well enough? Yes or no. You might have to turn those reports into like a principal or like into a school district and they're analyzing that data as well. Um, so you're not only analyzing yourself, but you're, you're collecting it for someone else to analyze as well. And that's at least, you know, two bullet points in my opinion on your resume. Um, you can put the word Excel, you could put the word Google Sheets, you could put the word analyze. And the more that you have those different keywords on your resume, the better. So you're not starting from zero. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're at in the world. You have some sort of data analytics experience. So congrats. If you didn't know, now you do. Myth number three is that you need to learn all data skills. And the truth is you don't. There's so many people in their career who never touch Python, who don't even touch SQL who don't even touch Power BI. Like you'd be honestly so surprised uh, how many data analysts go their whole career just using Excel. And you can make it pretty far. I know a guy who's a CFO. He started as a data analyst and then went through this financial analyst role. And then eventually he's now the CFO. He's only ever used Excel his whole career. And if you only use Excel your whole career, that's perfectly fine. There's also like influencers and creators and YouTubers and LinkedIn influencers that you've definitely seen their content. And I promise you, they don't admit this, but they don't know Python. 
Python. How do I know that? Because they've come to me with a coaching call before and they've told me. I've been at certain events with them where we were all coding in Python and they didn't participate for some reason. So you'd be surprised. Like there's a lot of people out there who don't know things like Python. And if they don't know Python and they're really successful, that should be like a really good sign to you that you don't need to know Python. So like what skills do you need to learn? I've made so many videos about that, so many episodes about that. I'm not going to talk about it here. Although if you have to know Excel, Tableau and SQL are the places to start in my opinion. But my point here is like, you don't have to know like R. You don't have to know Python. Uh, if you just wanted to do Tableau, you could have a really great data career just with Tableau. Uh, there's lots of people that do that that make a lot of money just being really ridiculously good at Tableau. And that's okay. So when you're just getting started and you're trying to learn everything, just know you don't have to. You can start with three things. You can start with one thing even and just start there. Myth number four, you need a degree or a certificate. And the truth is to be a data analyst, there's not really a degree and there's not really a certificate. Like for instance, my wife is a nurse. You definitely need to be uh, like cert certified to be a nurse, right? You don't have to be certified to be a data analyst in, in the least. There's no like certifications really even for it. And up to like, I don't know, maybe a few years ago, like three years ago, the number of bachelors degrees for data analytics was really low. Number of master's degrees was maybe a little bit more, but like you guys, this stuff is pretty new. Um, and data engineering is even newer and there's even less like bachelor's degrees and master's degrees. So you don't need a degree or certificate. Now, does it help? I mean, yeah. Like if you got a statistics undergrad or a statistics master, that's one less thing that you need to be worried about, but it's not necessary. And it's maybe not even worth your time. Like I think you can get your foot in the data world without getting a master's degree, without having to go get a different bachelor's degree or something like that. The Google data analytics certificate, the IBM certificate, whatever other meta data camp certificates, even my program, I run a boot camp called the data analytics accelerator. I give all my people a certificate at the end. They kind of mean nothing. <laughs> I'm being honest, like they literally don't mean anything. They're fun. They're cool. They, they might make you feel good, but to an employer, they don't mean a lot. Do they mean a little? Honestly, no, <laughs> maybe a little bit, but not even that much. So if you're really focused on getting certified or getting some sort of a degree, maybe rethink your, your method because it's, it's a myth. You don't need one. Myth number five is that data jobs in general uh, are easy to land. And the truth is they're not easy to land. Is it that oversaturated? I don't think so, but it depends on your definition of oversaturated. Someone said, hey, data analytics, it's so oversaturated. I've applied for 20 jobs and I haven't heard back once. I'm like, okay, if that's your definition of oversaturated, then then heck yeah, it's oversaturated at that point. Uh, so it depends on your definition. If you think that you're gonna be able to land interviews and land roles with applying to 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50 jobs, uh, then you're probably mistaken. And that's a myth. In this economy, unfortunately, it's probably going to take triple digits to land a job. And I hate to say that. I wish that I could tell you that it's easy, but it's really not. There are certain things that you can do to increase your odds um, of actually landing a role. But just know that that's kind of true for any role <laughs> right now in this economy. Uh, I, there's something called the uh, interview ratio, which is basically like how many applications do you have to send to get an interview? And for every 100 applications you send right now, the average interview rate is like four. So it's 4%. So if you're not getting any callbacks after 20 applications, you're normal. You're just like everyone else. Now, if you're at zero interviews at all after 100 applications, then something's wrong. We need to look at that. But you don't really know that something's wrong until you get at least above 50. So if you're struggling to land a data job and you haven't applied to 50 jobs, get going, get applying. It's, it's the only way that you can really make progress. Data myth number six is that data jobs are remote friendly. And this one's kind of tricky because they are remote friendly. They do really lend well to remote careers. But I guess the actual myth is, th is that there's lots of remote data jobs. And the truth is there's just not in comparison to hybrid roles uh, or in-person roles. Remote roles only make about 16% of all data jobs, meaning the remaining 84% are either hybrid or in-person. And I think uh, the hybrid roles are about the same. So it's basically like 15% are remote, 15% are hybrid. That makes 30% and the 70% are in-person. And I wish this wasn't the case, but it is. There's just a big demand for remote jobs and we've kind of had a pushback on remote work. A lot of the bigger companies are like, we don't really like this, come back to the office. That doesn't mean that there isn't remote jobs. There definitely is, but there's not as many as you may think. And if you're only applying for remote jobs, just think about it. You're limiting yourself to literally only 15% of the available jobs. And then those are probably the most popular jobs too. So you're making your life extra hard because you can't apply to a bunch of jobs and the ones you are applying for have a bajillion applicants. 
applicants. So if you've only been applying to remote jobs, I suggest switching to do a mix of hybrid and in-person as well. Hybrid can be really cool. Hybrid can be like you're in the office, you know, four days a week and you work from home one day a week. Or I have some students in my program who come to the office once a week or who come to the office once a month. I even have one student who has come to the office once a quarter. Now that's obviously very rare, but those are all hybrid roles. So hybrid is quite a spectrum. So I would try to focus more on hybrid roles because you're going to kick out a lot of the competition because it's limited to that location. So I'd focus on on hybrid roles if I was. Myth number seven is that AI is going to take your job as a data professional. And I just don't think that's the case. Is AI good? Yes. And something I need to actually come clean in this episode and on my podcast is I've done a lot of sponsorships and brand deals with AI tools telling you how awesome they are. And they are awesome. They're very cool. And I try to paint them in the best light possible. But one thing I should tell you is there's days I get very frustrated with them. There's days where they don't work. There's days where they do the wrong thing. They make data up. They do the wrong calculation. They don't actually do what they're supposed to do. And if I was in like an industry sometimes, like a, like a company, like that would be really big mistake if I just trusted it. So you need someone to be controlling and looking at these AI data analysts, if you're even using them at all, right? I liken it to like a pilot. A pilot is someone who's flying the plane, right? And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I don't think pilots do a ton of the actual flying right now in these days. Like I think the plane does a lot of it on its own. Now, of course the pilot's there and does like the more complex parts of it, right? And they're there if something goes wrong. But to my understanding, the plane kind of does a lot of the work itself, the computers inside the plane. But it doesn't mean that pilots are going away. In fact, there's two pilots still on every flight right? Even though the plane's theoretically flying itself. The same is true also for like robotic surgeries. Like you still have doctors there doing the hard parts, watching, making sure everything's okay. Honestly think that's where the furthest that a data analyst role would go is it's like, okay, I'm watching it do its thing. I'm making sure that it's doing everything correctly. I'm coming in and doing the, the manual or the hard parts manually. Personally, that's where I see AI plus data jobs going in the future. I don't think it's taking your job at all. I think you're fine. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, I actually have a free weekly newsletter where I share stuff like this, and I think you are going to love it. You can subscribe at datacareerjumpstart.com slash newsletter. It's absolutely free and will help you land your data job faster. See you in the next one. Okay.